We have some fast solar wind from some coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth's strike zone over the next couple days and could bring us some aurora down to mid-latitudes. And an old big flare player puts on a show on the sun's far side, and it's about to rotate back into Earth view. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is kicking into high gear and we have some eye candy to prove it. As we take a look at our earth facing disc, look up at the east limb right on the 15th, BAM! Did you see that? Now it may not look like much, but that was a massive eruption on the sun's far side, and I'll get to that more in a minute. Meanwhile, we also have two coronal holes. You can see them there. They are now rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and they've been sending us some fast solar wind. And this is going to bump us up to storm levels if it hasn't already, and bring aurora down to mid-latitudes easily over the next 24 hours, possibly uh, 48 hours before things begin to calm down. But that's not even the whole story. As we were turn to the disc, you can see uh, again in the east limb right on early on the 19th, look at this, whoosh! See that pretty loop of an eruption? That sent a solar storm off to the east of Earth, and then later that same day, down in the south, whoosh again! There's another solar storm. Once again, not Earth-directed, but Stereo's probably having a blast taking a look at all of this stuff. Meanwhile, as we continue to look at the disc, we don't see a lot of uh, big flare players right now, but we do have the hint of one that's going to be rotating into Earth very soon. Switching to our far-sighted monitor, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. Now take a look at the east limb in Stereo's view on the 15th. Wait for it. Whammo! Right there! Did you see that? That was a massive solar storm launch. This is the launch that we had a hard time seeing Earth's side, but Stereo captures it just beautifully. In fact, as we look further out, we can see in Suvi's imagery, you can see that big solar storm launch out like that. And then if we pull out even more, look at what Solar Orbiter catches. It's amazing how well we can image the middle corona and look how massive this solar storm is. It's a, a hint of what is to come in some of the spectacular imagery we're going to see from the EUI instrument. Anyway, getting back to the disk and the region responsible, this is old region 20. 2936. Anybody remember that region? It's the one that I think last time I checked took out a few Starlink satellites. Oh yeah, well it's been busy on the sun's far side, I'll tell you. And it doesn't look like it's quite done. In fact, as it's rotating into view, we're seeing that it and its, its cousin, region 2938, they're still alive and well. In fact, when we use helioseismology and we take a look at how these regions have kind of evolved over the course of moving to, through the sun's far side and back around Earth's side, you can see those dark shadows are telling you that those regions actually might have grown a little bit on the sun's far side. But that's probably why it launched that massive solar storm along with a massive solar flare and a radiation storm that we actually felt here at Earth. So we'll see if this thing just kind of lost all its gusto now, now that it's kind of you know, launch the biggie, and maybe it'll be all tired by the time it comes back around. So don't fret too much. This isn't going to be a planet killer. Don't worry about that. So we'll see what happens when it rotates back into view, but guaranteed it's going to boost that solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. And I know you need it because we've actually dropped out of the triple digits and we need to get boosted back in the triple digits so we have some good radio propagation again on Earth's day side for you. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, and by the 24th, the moon will still be about 44% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are being hit by the fast solar wind from not just one but two coronal holes that are going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone over the next couple days. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting uh, up to about a 65% chance of a major storm, and this will continue easily over the next couple days and in through almost midweek before things should settle down. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you should get a pretty good show over the next couple days. 
Now, mid latitudes, well, we only have about a 10% chance of a major storm. And we could get minor storm conditions, but things are going to be a bit sporadic with these two coronal holes. It's not quite clear how good of a show we're going to have and or how long it will last. So only if you're dedicated should you chase over the next couple days, and then things will definitely be settling down by about midweek next week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk, and thus the big flare risk is not completely in the green, with especially region 2948. NOAA is giving us about a 10% chance of big flares from that region. All the other regions on the disk are reasonably quiet, but we do have old region 2936 that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days, so at the latter part of the week, you do see that M flare risk rise. That's just a precaution. We're not sure if that region is still a big flare player, but you know, we're going to have to stay on our toes. Meanwhile, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're going to love this. We do have that solar flux boosting back into the triple digits, and that's going to continue easily over this next week, possibly go even higher than what we've got it here. But that's also going to come with uh, a bit of noise on the radio band. So just going to have to deal with that. Also, you GPS users, well, as you can see, we do have a minor risk for radio blackouts, so be sure to stay vigilant, especially near the dawn and dust terminators over this next week. So the space weather this week has been all sorts of eye candy. Not only have we gotten some massive solar storms that have not been Earth directed, but they've been absolutely gorgeous, both to the east of Earth and on the sun's far side. But we also have some solar storming from some fast solar wind that's hitting us right now. So aurora photographers at high latitudes and even at mid latitudes, enjoy the shows that you'll be getting over the next 24 to 48 hours before things calm down and then stay vigilant because because we do have solar storm producers that are rotating Earth side, and we could get some Earth-directed solar storms here, probably starting sometime next week. Now, um, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, things are looking a little bit better for you. We do have that solar flux that's boosting, and it's going to continue to boost. But of course, along with that uh, higher solar flux comes good radio propagation on Earth's day side, but it also comes with a little bit of noise on the band, so you'll have to be dealing with that. And then also you're dealing with that solar storm on Earth's night side right now, and that could make propagation a little bit dicey over the next couple days. And then now you GPS users, well, things aren't so good for you right now. We have to deal with the rising solar flux, which doesn't make uh, low latitude reception very good. We also have a bit more noise on the bands and the risk of radio blackouts for you, which makes it kind of tough near dawn and near dusk. And we also have a solar storm going on, which doesn't help you at all on the night side anywhere near Aurora. So right now, you're just going to have to hunker down and just be super vigilant. And if you're a drone pilot, be sure to calibrate your magnetometer often. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.